until I can dig my own wells, I insist on being allowed to pay for watering my stock on Ponderosa land. There's absolutely no necessity for that, Mr. Nagel. I'd never charge any of my neighbors for the use of Ponderosa water. Every man has his own rules, Mr. Cartwright. Well, I'm, sure. I'm new in Nevada. If I accept no favors, I'm under no obligations. All right, you just use as much of that water as you need and pay whatever you think is right. It'll be a fair price. I need one of your stallions, Mr. Cartwright. At a fair price. Well, I think I have two or three to sell. I'll be in Carson City for about a week or ten days. As soon as I return, I'd like to see them. Fine. Anytime you're ready. Sense. I'll try this. That's reasonable. I got a hole in my pocket. I lost. I'm broke. I need a drink. I'm a good a swamper. I clean the whole place. Well, we got a swamper. Oh, it's just me. Mm. This ought to be worth something. Not to me, mister. I've already got a box full of those old metals. I don't need any more. That belong to you? Is that metal belong to you? Oh, yeah. Uh, Want to buy it? I'm surprised you'd be willing to part with that. Why not? You want it? You can have it. A couple of whiskeys. 40 cents. When was the last time you had something to eat? I gave that up a long time ago. Yankee war medal. What for? Being the best drunk in the army? This is the Congressional Medal of Honor. Slept 24 hours around the clock. Where did I end up? At my ranch, the Ponderosa. I'm Ben Cartwright. Matthew Rush. You think I'll live? <laughs> yes, I think you will for a little while anyway. The doctor was here. Said all you needed was some rest and good food. Oh, and uh, no more liquor for a while. That sounds like something a doctor would say. Ah, uh, maybe he's right. Oh, our cook, Hop Singh, is a very good barber as well. Where were you off to when this happened? Just down the road. Just down the road. Hmm? Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to postpone your trip. You're not going to be able to travel for a while. Is there anybody you'd like me to notify? No. You've gone to a lot of bother already. No bother. I can't pay you. No, I asked you to. Thought you might want this back. Come on, take it. You're among friends. Relax. No questions? No questions. Yeah, I need a place to catch my breath. Good. I'll get you some food. Be right back. Oh, yeah, here, here it is. July 12th, 1862. The president is authorized to present in the name of Congress a medal of honor only to each person who, in action involving actual conflict with an enemy, distinguishes himself conspicuously by gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. 
Just about says it, don't it? In intra intrepidity. What that? Uh, that that means uh, brave, not afraid of anything. Not for hop sing. Shooting start. Hop sing run like a rabbit. How many people have been given the medal? Let me see. Yeah, forty-seven. Four years of war. That ain't many, is it? Well, I'm gonna give it to the best. One of them winds up a drunk. Why? Well, only Matthew Rush can answer that question. He's made it very clear he doesn't want to discuss it. I'm saying. Our guest is awake and hungry. You better start him off with uh, soft boiled eggs, I guess. Hmm? Doctor, tell Hop Singh, soup first, then egg, then steak and potato. Soup ready, long time. Number one soup for inch, inch, number one man. Matthew Rush. You say where he's from? No. No, where he's going, no, what he does for a living. I mean, according to this book, he's lucky to be living. It says here. Most of the medals had to be given posthumously. Only a few men lived through the combat action in which they won the award. something to do, some little chore. I found the pieces of this over in the corner. Yeah, I've been intending to have that fixed for some time now. She was glad I waited till you came along. My father was a cabinet maker. I used to watch him a lot, and I learned a little. Yeah, we could use a man with your skills around here. Interested in the job? No, I was going to move on. As soon as I finished this chair. Fine. Mr. Cartwright. I took a bottle out of your liquor cabinet. Hope you don't mind. I needed a drink. Thanks for telling me. My daughter, Laurie. Laurie Ben Cartwright. My pleasure. Thank you. I've come to look at your stallions. Oh, well, uh, they're in the corral up the road about a mile. I'll get my horse. Oh, no need. Plenty of room for two in the buggy. Oh, your daughter? No, Mr. Cartwright. When father is talking or buying or selling horses, I stay clear away. Let me help you. Thank you. <laughs> you have a very nice house. Oh, thank you very much. If it's all right, I'll just stay here and look around. Well, certainly. Make yourself at home. I'll get Hop saying I'll cook together. Oh, don't worry about me. Just take Father to see your horses before he explodes from pure impatience. If you're looking for Mr. Cartwright, he's probably in... Oh, he's in a horse trading dicker with my father in the North Pasture. I'm Laura Nagel. Matthew Rush. You live around here? Father bought the box A. We just moved in. Where from? Georgia. Oh, I thought I detected some Georgia or South Carolina in your voice. If I get a guess, too... Your voice says New England. But we're both Nevada now. Well, an old friend. My mother had an armchair, something like this, in her sewing room. It was one of her favorites. Mine, too. It's a good chair was. Ours are ashes now. We were burned out. 
That's why father moved the family out west. I like this chestnut. There's some Tennessee Walker in him, isn't there? Yep, a steadiness. And gait. Mm -hmm. I've owned some walkers made you think you'd saddled a rocking chair. <laughs> I think I see how you achieved your bloodline. A careful, selective crossing of Walker, Morgan, and Arab. Ah. And Texas cow pony. Our Texans are breeding and raising very fine cutting and quarter horses. I know that. A young Texan once bet me his bird-tailed pony could beat one of my thoroughbreds to the quarter pole, winner take both horses. That's how the Willowbend bloodline went to Texas. <laughs> Did you say Willowbend? Willowbend Farm? Well-known name once. Oh, still is, still is. In the record and stud books, jumpers and hunters. Didn't you enter one of your horses in the Grand National? Two of them. They ran out of the money, but I'm proud to say they both finished and neither refused to jump. We were going to saddle up a winner next time out. Sherman's men put the torch to that dream. They burned my house and barns, stole my horses, butchered my beef. The shot killed my wife. My apologies, sir. I didn't mean to start fighting the war again. Some wounds took a long time to heal. I had a few of those myself. Some never heal. I like clean simplicity of design. This would be a very pretty house. Just the main room, bedroom, kitchen, doorways. You must be a bachelor. Yes. How'd you know? Because that's a man's house. Women like big kitchens. Oh, oh well, here, we can fix that. <laughs> There's a big one. Now we have some extra rooms added on. One. She has the family grow. And white curtains and red window boxes. Sure, all right, white curtains. When do you start building? Oh, I don't know. I don't really want to or need to. I thought everybody wanted a home. Laurie. What are you doing in here with him? Talking. Mr. Rush was just showing me the plans to a house he wants to build. Get away from him. I don't understand what. I'll tell you why. This Mr. Rush is a war hero. President Lincoln gave him the highest decoration they have. He's a Yank. Like the one killed your brother Billy Wayne and two of your uncles. Father, please. Burned Wooler Bend to the ground, caused your mother's death. The man wins the big Yank medal. He had to do a lot of killing. I know this is your place, but there's a time when a man has to say what he thinks. You said a little while ago, you didn't want to go on fighting the war. Well, I meant it. What Sherman's men did wasn't war. There was no possible military reason or excuse for the burning and the looting and the destruction. That I'll never forgive. You keep away from me and mine. Clear away. Start getting the supplies. Oh, we can load those after the service. No, it's all right, Mr. Cartwright. Give me the list. I'll go get them. I'll get it started.
be long. Hey, mister! My pa says you won a medal for killing soldiers in the war. How many did you kill, mister? Go on, war hero. Tell him. How many was it? Church Bazaar next week. Oh, Thursday. I'll be gone. It's for a very good cause. New books for the school. Barn dance, games, prizes. Will you be there? I have charge of one of the booths ser serving cakes and pies. As long as we could, we got to be in Concho by noon. Well, it's always nice to see you boys, but uh, didn't we say our goodbyes last night? Yeah, we did, but we got the back of the chuck wagon. We found some supplies we were missing. Well, you did send the chuck wagon on ahead, didn't you? Uh, yeah, three hours ago. Uh, that's why Hoss brought an extra pack horse to carry the supplies we're going to get from you. What took you so long, Long Sermon? No, not overly long. It just took a while to read all the plans and prizes for the bazaar and the street fair. The street fair? When's that? Next Thursday afternoon and evening. Oh, you mean we're going to miss it? We, we're going to miss Are they going to have a barn dance like they did last year? Yeah, and a shooting gallery with 30 donated prizes, including a solid gold watch and a boot with the prettiest gals in the congregation selling kisses. Hey, Paul, don't you think I ought to stick around? I mean, don't you figure the Ponderosa needs to be represented? Well, Matthew and I represent the Ponderosa. Yeah. There goes the pancake eating championship. Boss, why don't you take the buckboard and leave us the pack horse? I think we'd wind up with more supplies. Well, I, I thought about that, Paul, but I don't know what we'd do with three kegs of meal on a trail drive. <laughs> I was going to move on in the morning. Any special destination? No, just down the road. But if the offer's still open, I'd like to work for you until after the bazaar. For room and board or for this old chair. Well, I'll be glad to have you, Matthew. At top hand pay. Hmm? As far as this chair is concerned, I was figuring on throwing it out anyway because I didn't think it was worth anything. So it's all yours, no charge. Now we better have some supper before Hop Singh decides to feed it to the chickens. Come on. Looks good. Gallery is that way, the bond ends is that way. And here's an advance against your pay. Advance, yes, that's more than advance. And the uh, pine cake booth is just back there will be past it. I think you saw it. away for a few moments. Is there anything I can do for you? Well, I brought this chair as a gift for her. Would you tell her that, please? Your name, she'll want to know who left it. Oh, she'll know who left it. Thank you. Three bottles. 
arrows in five seconds. That's the fastest and best shooting of the day. All right, gentlemen, five shots for one dollar. And every man that can hit three bottles in five seconds wins a cash prize. And the man who shoots the fastest and the best for the day wins a solid gold watch. <laughs> Who's got the best time so far? You have? <laughs> Well, all right. Uh, who's next? Uh, ah, Ben. Ben Cartwright. How about you? <laughs> well, uh, how about your friend then? Yeah, sure, the middleman, big war hero. Come on, show us how to do it. I'm oh, sorry, I don't have a gun. No trouble. No trouble at all. We brought guns and belts for all who forgot to wear them. <laughs> all paid up here. Be worth it. To see you shoot. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Cartwright. It's all in fun for a good cause. Are you ready? Draw! Sorry. Strange gun. You're probably you can do better with your own weapon. I know. I felt fine. I just missed it. Wasn't a pistol that bothered him. It was a target. A hero like that doesn't want to pop away at bottles. He needs live targets to gun down. That's enough of that now. It's true. Put men in there for targets, I bet you he doesn't miss. You don't know when to quit, do you, Walt? I haven't even started yet, Mr. Cartwright. I'm not about to quit till I run that middleware and yank clear out of the state of Nevada. All right, gentlemen, let's see who can win a solid gold watch. Fastest and best shot of the day wins a solid gold watch. That's right, sir. Step right up here. Gonna dance every dance with you the rest of the evening. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but I've already promised the next dance. Mr. Cartwright? I think this is our dance, isn't it? Oh, yes, of course. I'd, I'd forgotten. Excuse me, ladies. Thank you for saving my life. My pleasure. Will you tell me something? If I can, yes. Well, somebody left a chair for me at the booth today. Oh. A beautiful armchair. I think I know why, but after the terrible things that my brothers and fathers said to him, why would he? Young yeah, lady, have you had a good look at yourself in the mirror? Well, if you doubt that, I suggest you ask the young man himself. He's sitting in our way. Just went over there. At least that's what I left him a little while ago. Um, I do have to say thank you. Oh, Miss Laurie. Good evening. Mr. Rush, thank you for the chair. Oh, there's nothing. But it is. It's lovely. Well, if you say so. Uh, I know you don't want to drink, do you? <laughs> do you mind if I do? It's a beautiful chair. That's a Yankee way of saying I'm sorry your house burned down. Please. That wasn't your fault or mine. That was just something that happened like that. Thunder, the lightning. Besides, it's over and done. Yeah, some people haven't been so informed. You bought one of my pies. Yes, I went by your booth a couple of times. And I bought one. But you haven't even tasted it. I will, if you care to join me. Ooh, no, I can't stand my own cooking. Well, in that case, I'll save it for breakfast. Well, now, that's a silly time to eat pie. I do silly things all the time. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I went looking for you. I wanted to say goodbye. When are you leaving? In the morning. Well, maybe you'll find a place to build that house. It's not likely. The 
Yeah, the, the, your folks back at the party are going to be missing you. If you belong to me, I'd be concerned about you. That music sure sounds good when you're away from it, doesn't it? Makes you want to dance. It just keeps asking you to dance. Here? By yourself? Here, but not by myself. Oh, well, Miss Lorraine, if you're willing to take a chance with a man that's had one too many... Or two too many. Or two too many, I'd be honored to dance with you. I'm sure I can put up with you. Yes, it's not my day. Gentlemen, where's Laurie? Time we headed home. She's not dancing. Maybe she's over at the cake booth. We'll be getting a fortune told. Well, find her. I'll meet you at the wagon. Get out of the way. The fall will take care of you. Won't stop it. There's a fight! Hey, there's a fight! Hey, there's a fight! I warned you to stay clear of us. Of all of us. I asked him to dance with me. I asked him! Because you're a big Yank war hero. You think you can walk right over us. Well, Blue Belly, I'm gonna prove you wrong. Now get up. Whoa, wait! Get her out of here. Keep her out. Lori, come here. Smart. Get up. I'm not going to fight with you. You get up, and you fight. You get up, or I'll drag you up and down every street in Virginia City. It's over. You hear that? It's over. I don't care who started this or why, but it's over. I'll prove what I wanted to. Oh, tell me, will you? What did you prove? That I'm better than you are. That you're better than me. That's some ambition. I don't need none of your trash. Did you hear that, Ben? He said he wanted to be better than me. <sighs> no bones broken. I guess the bruises and the cuts will all heal up nicely. Uh, want some of this medicine? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to go to all that trouble. I'm sorry I didn't get this sooner. Well, if you had, you would have disappointed a lot of people. Why, well, do you think they enjoyed watching you getting beat up like that? They all stayed and watched. Are you surprised that a man that won't go to church owns a Bible? It's a little. Take a look at the inscription. You'll be surprised even more. Presented to Matthew Rush from his fellow graduates. Yale University, 1860. The honor student in an honored profession. Are you an ordained minister? You're half right. I was an ordained minister. My father wanted me to be a builder, but I had another star to follow. 
The proudest day of my life was the day I was ordained. Then came Fort Sumner in the war, and that turned me away from the ministry. Why? Well, how could I stand in front of a congregation and preach about love for my fellow man when all I saw was hate? And I was part of it. Yes, most soldiers have had to force themselves to forget that. But most haven't forgotten or forgiven. You take Seth Nagel and his sons. They carry their hate around like a flag. Well, not everybody's like that. Well, perhaps not. But all those good people tonight, they wanted to see a fight in the dirt. The North against the South, the war all over again. Yeah. Yes, there are some. There'll always be some. The rest of us just keep trying and praying for some miracle to help us along. Well, I, for one, am out of miracles. I think I'll be leaving in the morning. This isn't the same way we went to Virginia City the other day, is it? No, no, it's, uh, it's just a little longer, but it's uh, pretty country. Since you're leaving, I thought you should have a chance to see it. passed through this spring, got drunk, set fire to it. Oh, it's too bad. It's a beautiful place to build. The people who lived here must have been awfully unhappy. Yes, they were. Strange looking building for a home that was all one big room. It was, but one room was enough. a church? Did you bring me out here deliberately? It was just a little out of our way. Is it going to be rebuilt? Yes, I think so. What happened to the minister that was here? Oh, he went on to another town. Another church. Well, I wish you luck with it. Matthew. You say you saw the destruction of war. The, the waste. You see it right here. But after war, man rebuilds. Like this will be rebuilt. With sacrifice, courage. If we give up on ourselves, we have no place to go. Well, if we don't see each other again, goodbye. Good luck to you. Sam? Morning, Ben. How's the missus? Complaining. She'll live to be a hundred and still complain about all her miseries. <laughs> what can I do for you? I want to send a telegram. Uh, who's it go to? 
The War Office, Washington, D.C. Out here, that uh, that Yank, that Rush, yeah. he's building right next to my land. Yes, he's building a church. I don't care what it is. Let him build it somewhere else. Well, it, it's an ideal location. You see, the, the road runs right past, and it's close to town. Cartwright, that's your land. You can run him off. Well, what is it about a church that? It isn't the church. It's the man that's building it. The man that won that killing medal. Cartwright. Cartwright, I commanded a company of men, 250, and I sent 36 survivors back to their families, 36 out of 250. And all for what? For nothing. We lost it all. And you're asking me to let a man like that build a church facing my land, let it stand there and remind me of what he and others like him did to all but a few of my men? No, no, no! Mr. Nagel, there are a lot of men in this town who fought against each other in that same war. Now they're neighbors, they're friends. Give it a chance to work. Make an effort. I'll ask you one more time. Take back that land. Send him packing. He stays and the church gets built. very little of you. The answer is no. Has it gone so far that you won't even let me ask before you say no? Look, what harm has he done you? And I don't mean the Yankee army. I mean Matthew Rush. He wore the uniform. That's harm enough. There are a thousand people in Virginia City who wore that uniform. Are you going to try and run them all out of Nevada? Only the one that got the top medal for killing. And if he won't go? He'll go. One way or another. You go. Pa, wagon's all loaded. Got everything we need? Everything we need. You stay in the house till we get back. You hear me, Laurie? I hear you. Ugly looking stuff, isn't it? About ready now, Pa. Did you ever see a man tired before? Time for talking is over, Pa. I'll say when it's over. Have you? It's not a pretty sight. A man carries his scars over to his grave. I'll give you one more chance. Pack up tonight and get out. I'll call this off. Stubborn, mule-headed Yankee. Told you time for talking was over. Well? 
Get on with it. Do what he says. This won't stop it, Cartwright. It may set it back, but it won't stop it. What will? The killing? If it takes that. I think you ought to know something about the man you're so intent on killing. This came to me in reply to a telegram I sent to the War Department in Washington. Ben, I wish you wouldn't read that. I want them to know. Subject, citation to Lieutenant Matthew Rush, Army of the United States. On July 2nd, 1863, at Chancellorsville, an artillery barrage had forced both Union and Confederate forces to retreat, leaving behind their wounded. It was considered impossible to re-enter the area. Lieutenant Rush, although severely wounded and with a disregard for his own life, entered said area again and again under heavy bombardment and pulled to safety those wounded soldiers, both Union and Confederate, he was able to find. He remained with them, giving them medical aid and spiritual comfort, Lieutenant Rush being an ordained minister, until his own wounds rendered him unconscious. For this heroic and unselfish act, his grateful government is proud to award Lieutenant Matthew Rush the Congressional Medal of Honor, Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States. Why? Why didn't you tell me? This, all of it, wouldn't have happened if I'd known why. I'm Matthew Rush, a human being, my friend. I want to be accepted for what I am, not for something I did. It's over. Build your church. tolerate me, but now it's not the right foundation to start to build on. Matthew, how do you think I knew what was going on here today? She came to me and told me she had no idea how you had won that medal. It doesn't take too much to start a miracle. Just one step at a time. Show me what you're building. together be ashamed not to keep in touch you look me up now whenever you get to town no i don't believe i will why not i'll buy you a beer i don't drink mister well, coffee what about coffee help yourself me i take my own friends thanks for stopping go ahead and take it away ah, heat up.
carpet back there, will you, friend? You take all the sport out of drinking. <laughs> I was on the verge of despair. You still are. I'm not going to loan you any money, Charlie. I got something that's too big for me to handle. I was hoping against hope. What do I find the best in the bit? Not one red cent. It's big and easy. He's a greenhorn like you wouldn't believe. Hay seeds in his hair and money coming out his ears. Somebody's gonna clean him like that. Unless you and me do it first. Tell me more. Hey, Pollock, who's here? Hey, Kelly. Chris Kelly, how are you? Good Fine. to see you. Good Fine. to see you. When'd you get in? Just a little bit ago. Yeah? I saw him down the road about four miles walking. Well, uh, how'd you make out in the gold fields? Any luck? I found a little gold. Yeah? No, he told him he could have his old job back. Oh, sure. Of course he can. Hey, what's a big gold operator like you uh, wanted to work as a cow hand for? Well, I uh, figured if a man's got a little money, he ought to be happy. But it didn't work out that way. People are always hanging around me, slapping me on the back, calling me friend and pard. Hmm? Always trying to get my money. It was enough to gag a rattlesnake. Some people are like that. Sure will be a pleasure to get out there in the bunkhouse and get settled. Well, of course, the best way to protect yourself is to say as little as possible about your money. That's just what I got in mind. It's especially important right now, Chris. There's a bunch of confidence men in town. Sheriff doesn't know who they are, but he does know a lot of people have been swindled. Now, if it were to become known that you had struck it rich, they'd be on your back in no time. Well, how much do you make? Oh, uh... Sixty-seven thousand. Sixty-seven thousand. Hey, friend, hard. This we uh, we want to talk to you about a couple of things. <laughs> no, don't you dare talk to anybody about how much money you made. You're not carrying it around with you, are you? No, I I bought me a letter of credit. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, not a good idea. You take that letter of credit into the bank first thing in the morning. Oh, and uh, if anybody tries to send you to the city hall or the county jail, cheap. <laughs> you tell us about it. All right. Come on, let's get settled. Thanks, Mr. Carter. Listen, did you, did you ever think about buying a bunkhouse? I want to use a bunkhouse out there. And I got loaded. $67,000. Gentlemen. Charlie Pitch. The Alderman. Obi Miles. How you doing? Walt King. My pleasure. What do you want to see us about, Howard? Charlie says he's lined up a sucker for us here in town. I thought you wanted to go on to Denver in the morning. This could be good. All right, we've made five scores here already. No fixing with the sheriff. I figure it's time to move on. I think we ought to be able to pull off one more without any trouble. Depends if it's worth it. How much money this chump's got? Charlie? Story is, he made it pretty good in the gold fields. You the double-jointed fellow they call Loose Charlie? That's me. He falls in front of carriages, throws himself out of joint, and yells and carries on. What do you pick up for a thing like that? Fifteen, twenty bucks? Yeah, generally. His idea of a big score in ours might be something different. Charlie put me on to something good a couple of years ago. This could run maybe three, four thousand dollars. Oh, more like five times that. Second thought. Maybe we better take a look at this chum. Indeed.
So that's the mark. Looks like a real cinch. There's a couple problems. I see how quick I can pick him up. Buy him a few drinks. Oh, he didn't drink. All right. Pie and coffee. Stay with him. We'll get him in a game tonight. He doesn't gamble. We'll teach him. He knows. He's against all forms of wagering. That knocks out poker. And the race why? We let the alderman try the stock market swindle. Uh-uh. Why not? He's a country boy. You say stock, and he thinks you mean cows. Charlie, is there anything else you haven't told us about this Yahoo? Well, he tips his hat to ladies. And he's honest. How honest? All the way, straight as air. His name is Christian Keller. Is he ripe for picking? I mean... Don't count on it. Charlie, thanks for nothing. He deposited $67,000. Are you sure? Positive. Well, it may be a little time consuming, but I guess we're going to have to sell him something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of company was that again? A uh, patent reaper company. Patent reaper company. Well, that is a rich, full sound. And how did they pick you up? I was sitting there having a cup of coffee, and this fellow comes up to me. Walt, his name is. Mm -hmm. And he says, did I drop my wallet? And sure enough, underneath my chair, there's this wallet. So you looked into it, and you found out who owned it. Hmm? That's right, Mr. Hobie Miles. And the wallet was stuffed with money. Was it? So, of course, you took the wallet right back to Mr. Hobie Miles at the hotel. And Mr. Miles just happened to own a patent reaper company. That's right. You know, I was finding wallets all the time up north. Well, they sure didn't waste any time, did they? No, but they didn't try and sell me anything. They just kept talking about how much money the stockholders in this company are going to make. But they, uh, they did say I could see the plans. Did they? And when do you see these people again? In the morning. And I asked him if I could bring a friend along. And they, uh, they said he'd be welcomed. Very good. I look forward to seeing a patent reaper. There you are, gentlemen. This little beauty will revolutionize harvesting. We already have orders for more of these machines than we can possibly manufacture in a year. You know, I think that could be a very big success. It already is. Well, uh, when I was here before, uh, said something about stock. Walt said that... Uh, Walt? What did Walt say? He said maybe we could buy some stock. He did, did he? What'd you say that for? You know every share of stock was spoken four months ago. I thought, Mr. Mott... Ma That's the problem. You didn't think. Now, gentlemen, I thought you came up here to see these drawings. I never dreamed Mr. King would give you the idea you could buy stock. I've, uh, I've refused uh, old friends, even members of my own family. Oh, well, I'm uh, very sorry. I... I'm sorry we've troubled you. No, no, wait now. Mr. Miles, Mr. Kelly, he is a friend of yours. He returned your wallet with more than a thousand dollars in it. He's an honest man, a, a deserving man. I admit that. And but... Mr. Kelly's friend, Mr. Cartwright, why, he owns one of the largest ranches hereabouts. He could be of great help in getting the reaper sale started in this area. Think about it, Mr. Miles. You be helping a man who helped you and also helping your reaper company. Well, now, there was a block of stock I was saving for a man who was supposed to be here two days ago. He hasn't shown up yet. So under the circumstances, I suppose I can let you have that. Thank you, Mr. Miles. Be expensive. Cost you seventy-one thousand dollars. Well, I haven't got that much. <clears throat> well, uh, Chris, I, uh, I just might be able to come up with the difference. Cash or certified check, no later than tomorrow morning. Yeah, well, uh, we could, uh, we could get get over to the bank and get things started. Well, thank you very much. It's I, all right. It's uh, awfully nice of you to allow us to participate in this. It's all right. A reasonable profit on an investment is always welcome, but. This also offers us a chance to help every rancher in Nevada. All right, gentlemen. We'll see you shortly. Hey, 
Hey, Hobie, you're Jim Dandy. Well, I was in top form, if I do say so myself. <laughs> and so was Ben Cartwright. <laughs> Oh, Cartwright and that Chris fella are coming up with the money. Mm-hmm. In marked bills with the sheriff in the next room. Huh? Don't you know a smart man when you see one? A man like Ben Cartwright isn't going to make a heavy investment after one meeting in a hotel room. So pack your things, both of you. You're leaving town right now. I guess we better. And this teaches me the virtues of humility. What about you? Mr. Blackwell? Hmm? Obi wants to know what uh, you're gonna do. You never give up. Not you. A wise man knows when it's time to quit. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened, Clem. Mr. Miles and company have disappeared. Vamoose, checked out. I'll be. I had the room next door, right? I was going to wait till you handed the money and then nail them. Sure. Now, what could have spooked them? Maybe we were too willing to buy. Well, we chased them out of town anyway. I mean, that's not as good as putting them in jail, but it's something. Oh, it is. Eh? Well, it's a job for me, is what it is. I've got to try and pick up the trail now. Yes, you do, Clem. Good luck. Oh, thanks a lot, Ben. Well, let's get back to work. I'm fine. I've been dragged across what must have been half of Nevada by a runaway horse that was guaranteed gentle and trustworthy. I've been battered and bruised. Yes, I'm just fine. Yeah, I guess you are. What do you mean? I'm just fine. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to make a speech like that if you weren't. You sure of that? Pretty sure. Well, he's, uh, he's settled down now. What scared him? Why'd you run away? He saw a snake in the road. Oh, see there? That's why he took off. Here you go. Let me help you down. All right. Ah! Oh! 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. I should be getting used to it. I'll just hold him in a... You get on down. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I was beginning to think you didn't know much about horses. Good. Could be, but I, uh, I know more about horses than I do about ladies. Oh? Well, I think it's a mistake to ask this, but I'm going to anyway. Just what do you mean by that? Nothing, except I thought you might get mad at me again for the horse getting scared. Oh, no. Anything but. I certainly haven't been very polite, have I? You saved my life, and I've scolded you as if the whole thing were your fault. I was thinking it was. I'm sorry. I can't even thank you properly. I don't know your name. Chris, ma'am. Chris Keller. Charity McGill. And I do thank you. You're welcome. Look, Miss McGill, why don't you get up here in the buggy? It's all right. Come on. And I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go to the Ponderosa. I work there. Not too far from here. Both you and your horse can get rested up. You ever heard of the Ponderosa? No. The biggest ranch in these parts. 
Mr. Cartwright owns it. Well, you know more about ladies than you think you do. Let's go. Well, I think I've got that horse all settled down now. Well, I guess I'm all settled down, too. Well, I better get started. Well, Miss McGill, it's a long ride to Virginia City. Wouldn't be any trouble if you like to stay over or if you want one of us to drive you back. Oh, you've done quite enough already, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. Well, goodbye, and thank you all. Nice meeting you. I'll goodbye. walk you to the buggy. I'm afraid I'll never be able to repay you, Mr. Keller. Well, don't think anything about it. Strikes gold and rescues a pretty girl. Some fellas have all the luck. Yeah, well, she's kind of cute. It seems very nice. Mr. Cartwright? Hmm? If I get all those uh, strays in this afternoon, uh, can I have tomorrow off? Um, <clears throat> yes, I, I suppose so. Uh, any particular reason you'd like to have the day off? Uh, I just thought I'd ride into Virginia City. Yeah, well, he's got money in the bank. He probably wants to win and watch it grow. <laughs> Can I give you a hand? Well, I would appreciate that. Just up to the hotel? Uh-huh. How have you been? Fine. Uh, lemon drops. Trying to chew them up quick so I can talk. <laughs> Do you have any peppermint? What was salt? Mm, thank you. I have an awful sweet tooth. So do I. I go around like this half the time. Say, did you get back to town all right the other day? No, I was captured by Indians, bought by a band of wandering gypsies, and finally rescued by the cavalry. That sounds terrible. Was. I nearly missed dinner. <laughs> ah, fish hooks. I know. They're too big. No, they're about right. Mm -mm, they're too big. I don't like to dispute a lady. Well, don't then. Have you done any fishing? Certainly. What kind? Chub, dace, catfish. Well, there you are. And trout and salmon. These things must be for sharks. You like to fish? Oh, yes. So do I. Miss McGill. I, uh... Yes? Nothing. Forget it. Well, it was awfully nice seeing you again, Mr. Keller. And thank you very much. My pleasure. <laughs> well, bye. Bye. Miss McGill. I, uh, I don't suppose you'd... Yes, I would. I'll be ready first thing in the morning. Oh, and those fish hooks are too big. Superstition fish can't hear. What you have to watch out for is letting your shadow fall on the water. Oh, your shadow's not going to fall on the water this time of day. Look at there. Mm. Uh huh? Here. Worms. Oh, no. Is that deep, I suppose? Of course. Grasshoppers, on the surface. Charity, your ignorance is pitiful. I'm going to go downstream and work that for a while. Hey, it's a pure waste of time. 
We'll see. Charity? Hmm. How you doing? Oh, so-so. One of your grasshoppers. <laughs> I've had a wonderful time, Chris. So have I. May I have my key, please? Maybe tomorrow I can uh, I can get off early and come into town and I'll, I'll take you to supper. Is there anything wrong? I don't think so. Well, are you sure? No, it's just some business. You go along, Chris. I'll talk to you later. Say so. Charity? It's all right, Chris. Ever finished. Good. See you later. Mr. Cartwright. Yeah. Uh, can I speak to you for a few minutes? Sure, Chris. I was over uh, taking a look at Ed Newhall's place the other day. And he's thinking of selling. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was just wondering what you thought about it. Well, Ed Newhall's place is uh, a good land there. Nice little, uh, nice little house. Good outbuildings, too. My impression, too. Mm -hmm. Just needs a little work. Are you interested? Yeah. Well, since those, uh, those swindlers took off, I thought I'd put the money to good use. Find a ranch, huh? Yeah, I know it's reaching kind of high, but, uh, well, Charity McGill's the finest girl I ever met. Well, now, you're thinking of getting married, too. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I haven't asked her yet. I haven't got up the nerve. I don't know what she'll do when I... When I do ask her. <laughs> you mean you, you don't know her well enough to know what she's liable to say? Well, sure I do. I know that uh, her father died recently and that she lives in Sacramento and she's here on business. And there's this fellow that's given her some kind of a problem. But I expect everything's going to work out all right. Sure hope so. Yeah, yeah, so do I, Chris. Sure do. Meanwhile, getting to know her better is all to the good. No marriage. It's for a long, long time. River, I tied into a big old steelhead. Boy, did he give me a fight. We're not doing very well today, are we? No. What time is it? Oh, 1, 1 30 in there. Why? Well, I have to be back to see the lawyer this afternoon. But there's still time. Honey, if there's anything I can do to help. No, no, it's just some affairs of my father's. Go on with the story. Oh, well, I. I wrestled with him for 20 minutes to a half hour easy. He was a real old sock to locker. That big. That's the gospel. How big? Oh, more like that. I thought so. <gasps> 
What'd I do? I've got a bite! <laughs> Nothing more I can do here, so I guess I'll go on home. How soon? Day after tomorrow. That's kind of sudden. Yes, I suppose. When will you be coming back? I don't believe I will. I mean, there's no real reason to. Guess not. You can come visit me. No, I don't think I want it. I'll write to you. Will you miss me? Oh. Charity, you're not going anywhere, because I love you, and we're going to get married. that and dreading it at the same time. What for? I can't, Chris. Why not? Well, you can't ask a man to take on a lot of unwanted problems. Well, not if you really and truly love him. <laughs> well, when my daddy died, about the only thing he left was the Leadbetter number six. Well, that's a gold mine just below here. Yes, I know. Well, about two weeks ago, I got a letter from this man, Arthur Blackwell, saying that he had mortgages and liens against the mine, and if I didn't pay them, he was going to take the mine. I don't understand your problem, Miss Miguel. Let him take it. That mine was worked out years ago. No, Daddy said he found a new vein, but that's not the point. Mr. Blackwell has been saying that my father salted the mine and falsified the assay to swindle him. Well, I'm not going to let this man blacken my father's memory. I see. I told Charity I had some money. And the easiest thing in the world was for me to get her out of debt. Well, I don't think you should do that. Well, Chris, you realize what you're saying. You're, I mean, when you strip it all away, what you'd be doing is uh, buying a gold mine. As long as it'll help Charity. Well, it'd have to be a loan, Chris, with a new assay and the proper papers drawn up and everything. What is the amount of the debt? $65,000. Hmm. Well, well, well. If you like, we'll, uh, we'll help you uh, take the assay. I mean, getting ore samples out of an old mine shaft is no work for a young lady. Well, that's very nice of you. I'd appreciate that. Of course. Um, I'll, uh, I'll write a note uh, for you to sign, giving us permission to be in your property. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Not at all. story we just heard. Our horse is down with the South Herd. Drop by there and tell them to meet us at the mine. I'll join you there in the morning. We just may be able to settle a couple of things. Ah, this hot coffee tastes good. Boy, it got cold last night. Oof, you're not kidding. Any visitors? Nope, nope, no one. Not at all? Yeah, from the looks of this place, nobody's been here in a year. Yeah. Gotta get the equipment here. Gonna get some samples all along the shaft. Maybe five feet or so. All right. I uh, want to get some core samples, too. About uh, six feet into the face. Well, might as well get started, huh? Six 
samples are worthless. I don't see how there could be anything of any value in that mine. Well, at least Charity's been honest about it. She's the one that wanted the assay report. I'm still troubled by the fact that the amount of money that she owes happens to be almost exactly the amount of money that Chris has in the bank. Isn't that strange? Well, I think it's just a coincidence. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Well, I hope so. Meanwhile, let's, uh, let's stick to the plan. If anybody tries to salt those samples, we'll let them look the other way. All right. I'll wait here for Hoss. Straight there. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, we can leave it out here watch from the inside. Well, that'll give them the chance they want. And we can have a beer. Not a bad idea. hours and not even a nip. Two free beers and a free lunch? It wasn't all wasted. Yeah, I suppose you're right. You bring Rock to maybe so office? Maybe so office? Maybe so you get rich. Maybe so you don't. Maybe so. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> ah, young men in search of a fortune. Bringing in a wagon load of high-grade ore for the ASA office. Solid gold rocks. I can tell by the feel of them. That's really our day for dingbats, isn't it? <laughs> Let's get this stuff inside. <laughs> huh? Well, Mr. Gill, sit down. Thank you. The, uh, this ASA report was uh, brought back about an hour ago by Joan Candy. Now, uh, most of the samples were proved worthless. That's to be expected. But according to this report, apparently there's a vein of ore in that mine which assays out at an average of $2,500 a ton. Hey, that's great. I never doubted it. And that's almost exactly the same figure Daddy had. Now is all we have to do is get the money to Mr. Blackwell and we'll have everything nailed down for you. For us. There's one other thing. Um, this report is based on one set of samples. Uh, we took two sets, as identical as we could possibly make them. My son, Hoss, is having the second set assayed in Carson City right now. Well, isn't that unusual? Just an added precaution. It's more than that. Well, let Mr. Cartwright tell me. Well, if the, uh, the two reports agree, then everything's all right. There's no problem. If they don't... He's saying there's something funny going on. Like what? Something. That's why he's getting two assays. Well, I think it's a good idea. I don't. Oh, Chris, stop fussing. It's time we were leaving. Well, please let me know as soon as you get the report. Of course. Thank you. You got the second report, huh? Well, the samples were the same as the others. Not quite. The best of these samples showed a value of a dollar six. 
That man's been manned up. The samples are just like the other ones. We got them at the same time from the same places. Sorry, Chris. She was trying to swindle me all the time. That's what she's trying to do. She wouldn't accept any help after I told her you were waiting for a second report. I had to beg her to take the money. But you did take it. Sure she did. Now, I'm not sure if I can get it back, but I'm going to try. I'd appreciate it if you ride along with me. Sure. My darling niece, where are you going? Well, I was going to leave Virginia City, but I wanted to see you first. Commander Boom, since you have the money that we all jointly earned from that young man, we do have to split it up. Well, I've been thinking about that. Uncle Arthur, I've made a decision about of this whole thing. Of course you have, my dear. All beginners come to that same decision the first time out. It's just buck fever. Come on. We'll have that little talk, hmm? A great day, gentlemen. Truly a great day. Well, that's right, Art. I mean, Mr. Blackwell. <laughs> there. Bleed, you rascal. <laughs> ah, greatest little invention since the wheel. Saw anything and everything. Uh, with the liquid essence of gold. <laughs> you are a good man. So are you, Charlie. From now on, you stick with us. <laughs> Much obliged. And now let us drink to that little lady without whose feminine charms and quick wit, none of this would have been possible. Here, here. To you, my dear niece, our heartfelt thanks. You did well on your first venture into the confidence world. Extremely well. Pity you had an attack of conscience. My dear, you must learn. Never give a sucker his money back. The real pity is you could have been one of the great ones. So, hail, farewell. <laughs> Start talking any time. I'm sorry, Chris. Sure you are. They got you tied up here like a Christmas turkey. No wonder you're sorry. All right. Oh. Who tied you up, Miss McGill? My uncle and his bunch. They're on their way to Carson City. They said they were going to Denver, but I know they're going to Carson. When did they leave? Oh, 30, 40 minutes ago, in a buggy. Oh, Chris, I know you're not going to believe this, but I was trying to bring the money back. All of it, when Uncle Arthur caught me. You're right. I don't believe it. Come on, let's go find him. Hey, look at this. Oh, yeah. Hey, wait, I'm going with you. Ha, 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 ha. 
If we gave all the money back, we'd only get about nine or ten years. Don't be a fool. All right. You let us go. We'll leave the money behind. Otherwise, I'll burn it up. Every dollar. Money's here and a lot more. They must have got it from them other fellas. Six weeks. Hard work. We let a chump like you take it away from us. There's no justice in the world. Your fault. My kin, but you don't take after my side of the family. Well, I'm sure my fiance won't mind. Your who? My fiance. Fella named Chris Keller. We're going to be married. We're going to be what? I know you won't believe this now, but it's true. I found out I couldn't steal, not even once. Because I love you, you big loot. And I'll convince you if it takes the rest of my life. Well, it won't take that long. I love you, Chris, honest. Those are the prettiest words I ever heard. I'll make him a good wife, really. You know something, Chris? I believe she will.
Can't you ever listen to me? All right, talk. I don't want to go to school. You told me you don't want to go to school. You told me until my head's ready to spin. Now, your pa says you're going, and that's final. He ain't my pa. But he's my husband. And as long as he keeps a roof over your head and clothes on your back and food in your mouth, he can tell you what to do. You never listen to me. You side with him against me all the time. And you make trouble all the time. Now, go on, get! He treats the dog better than he treats me. He comes at me one more time with that belt, and I'm going to tie it around you're his neck. You're going to what? You're going to do as you're told. OK, here we go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Well, this is, uh, this is the big day, isn't it? First day of school. And in a... A new schoolhouse. Well, actually, this is just a temporary one. We're going to be building the new one pretty soon. From now on, you're, you're going to be doing your learning right here. Uh, I, I, want to, uh, I want you to meet Mrs. Uh, M.K. Curtis. I say she was the social conscience of Virginia City. And we all owe a special thanks to her for putting the idea of the school into my head and then convincing me that it had been my idea all along. You'd have come to it, Ben. It didn't take much besides common sense. <clears throat> and uh, now I, I want you to meet your, your new teacher, Dr. Lyman. Probably the best educated man in this part of the world. You said you wanted the boy, Ben. I don't know why. You'll never pound anything into his head. Good, I think you better take your seat with the others. Tom, thanks for bringing Billy in. He's not my boy. He's my wife's. If he was mine and acted the way he does, he wouldn't be able to walk, let alone sit down. <clears throat> well, uh, I think this school offers everybody a big opportunity. Some of you may grow up to be smarter than we are. Uh, Ben? If you go on talking much longer, school will be over for the day. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Well, Doc, it's all yours. Thank you, Ben. You'd better keep a close eye on them, Ben. They look like a difficult group to handle. Oh, I'll watch them closely. You'll see that you do. I'm afraid it's going to take much more than your speeches to make a real school out of this place. Tilda, you're an amazing woman. Here you are with all the money in the world, so you shouldn't have to worry about anything, and yet you keep worrying about other people. That's probably because I can remember what it was like when we first came here, before my husband made his strike. It was a fight. It was a scramble just to stay alive. I don't think... Education cures all the world's ills. But I do think it helps. Yeah. Good day, Ben. All right, Luis.
Side. Come on, let's go. By the shores of Gitchigumi, by the shining big sea water, stood the white wigwam of no, no, Nokomis. Continue, Ted. I don't like reading, and even if I did, it wouldn't be about Indians. My pa don't like them either. Ted, you're probably going to school. You are. You do what you're told, right? There the wrinkled old Nokomis nursed the little Hiawatha. Yep. Here we are, Billy. No charge for the ride. Well, come on, you're gonna get all by yourself or you're gonna do it my way. Very good, Ted. Deborah. Do you know what Longfellow is trying to show us? That Indians have babies, so does everybody else. <laughs> Didn't want to spoil your attendance record, Doc. There was one that's... Sorry you were late. I wasn't late. Come on. I wouldn't be here at all. This horse outrun me. Yeah, well, that's true. Sit down. I know. You've got to make up for lost time. Deborah, would you please pass Billy the book? Billy, the class has been reading parts of Longfellow's poem, Hiawatha. I'm sure you'd like to take your turn. Well, Billy, I'm sure you must have learned to read at the Virginia City School. I wasn't there very much. They didn't send a posse after me. <laughs> I thought that we'd have a recess after you finished reading. But I guess the class will just have to wait for you to make up your mind. Candy, if you boys would like to take a recess, I think it'll be all right. This uh, may take a little time. All right, Doc. We'll be right outside if you need us. Keep out of this, you little pipsqueak. No need to rush. Let Billy take all the time he needs. We missed recess. I'm sure the class won't mind going without lunch. Oh. Oh. Come on, read it. It ain't gonna hurt you. Billy, will you? Come on, get it over with. Come on, my stomach's rumbling. All right, Doc. You're smart. Or you think you are. I suggest you read the short passage on page 43. Would you please stand? Oh, 
Homeward went Hiawatha. Pleasant was the landscape around him. Pleasant was the air above him. For the bitterness of anger had departed wholly from him. Excellent, Billy. Particularly fitting. That's about an Indian, not me. Perhaps in time. You'll be as bright as an Indian. <laughs> Billy, Billy. Billy. Apologize. You're real funny, aren't you, Doc? Making me look like a nothing. That wasn't the purpose, Billy. Yeah, well, you just go ahead and laugh. The school's gonna need another school teacher fast. Billy. Because you aren't gonna be around. You ain't that to nobody, Billy. I don't make threats. Get your hat and get on home. I heard all I want to hear about that school. All I said was they don't teach you nothing you can use. If they don't teach you nothing else, you'll learn to speak when you're spoken to, and that'll be a big help. Big words, that's all I throw at you. I don't need big words. I want to be a blacksmith. I don't care what you or anybody else says. I ain't going to school no more. There's only one language you understand. Let's oh, go. Put that gun away. Uh uh. You hit me for the last time. You make one move and I'll put a bullet in you. Maddie, my friend, Virginia City will never be the Athens of the New World. Based on my experience of today, in a few short months, the alphabet will disappear completely. Oh, Doc, most of those kids, they've never been to school before. Well, you can't expect them to sit still and learn all at once now, can you? Maddie, let us face an unpleasant truth. I have an unparalleled record of failure. Ranching, mining, <laughs> even dentistry. And now I can add to the list School teaching. Oh, no, come on, Doc, that's not true. You're a real smart man. Well, listen, Doc, you know that most everybody in this town comes to you asking for advice. There's Judge Morgan, uh, the sheriff. Oh, yeah, I seem to have all the answers for everyone, except myself. Yeah, but don't take my word for it. There are certified witnesses. Doc. Oh, you better give me another one. It may dull the pain a bit. Ben? I hereby tender my resignation as headmaster of the Ponderosa Preparatory School, and that will save you the embarrassment of firing me. Doc, nobody's firing you. I know you're discouraged, but I sure would like you to stay on as teacher. Ben, I can't handle it. That Burgess boy and his friends, they, they'll turn the place into a shambles daily. There won't be any more trouble with the students, big or little. I didn't realize the Cartwright reputation included miracles. <laughs> this is one of the easier ones. Will you stay on, Doc? It's a crime to ruin a consistent record like mine. Never once sullied by success. <laughs> but if you want me to, I'll stay. I want you to. I'll see you in the morning, then. Good night, Maddie. May I have a nightcap? I'll need a good night's sleep. Ah, you woman! Oh, break it up! Break it up, you two! Look! If you want to finish this fight, there's a big street outside. He called me a thief. Yeah, well, nobody's invented another name for it. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let, let's pretend to be civilized. What seems to be the trouble? The trouble is he don't want to believe what is written down legal in black and white. That's not true. My father wanted me to have a lucky caller. Easy. All right, now. One at a time. Dick, what's, what is the earth-shaking problem? Well, Doc, a few months ago, my father wrote me. He knew he was pretty sick. 
He wanted me to come back here and take things over for him. When I got to town, he was already dead. And Billings here is walking around with a bill of sale for the Lucky Calder for $5,000. That's right, because I worked hard for the old man. And that's why he sold me the Lucky Calder, mind. He knew this kid had run it into nothing. That's not true. My father wanted me to have the Lucky Calder. Suppose we take a look at the letter and the bill of sale, hmm? You bet. All proper, notarized, and everything. Take a look at that. Go ahead and read it out loud, Doc. I want everybody to know what a thief he is. In the short time the Lord has allotted me, I hope we can patch up our differences of the past. If you have gotten over all those wild, half-baked ideas, and if you can prove to me you have finally grown into a man, perhaps you can take your place running the lucky coulter, your father. There are a great many ifs in this letter. Your father must have changed his mind. Coulter, I'm sorry, but the bill of sale is legal. Figures. You're as crooked as everybody else in Virginia City. Then what could I expect from a drunk? The judgment was sober. Doc, for your own good, stay out of my way. Don't you ever come near me again. Uh, Doc, do I have my bill of sale back? Hmm? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I was studying it. Maddie? Yeah, Doc. Could I have a second night, Kent? This is not one of my better days. Come on, you two. Hey, come on, come on. Bring it back. Sit down. Sit down over there. Doc's a half an hour late. We ain't gonna be able to keep them kids quiet long. Well, if he doesn't get here in the next 10, 15 minutes, we'll just send him home, that's all. Hey, where's the doc? Couldn't you find him? He's dead. They found him about five miles from here in Almond Creek. Somebody shot him. At least a dozen of us out trying to round up people who might know something that'll help. I'm here. Joe Cartwright's over at Chip Lang's. The sheriff just wants to see Billy, that's all. Got to tell him, Nora. Wouldn't be right not to tell him. Well, it's for the best, I guess. That boy's a bad one. I've said it time and again, he's gonna come to no good. Can you tell me where I might find him? Got no idea. I can tell you what he'd done last night. He threatened to shoot me, put a bullet in me, in my own house with my own gun. Generally, it takes two to start an argument. What was the fight about? There was no fight. He's just mean. Do you have any idea where he might be? Nope. But I ain't finished telling you what he did. He sneaked back last night and took the best horse and the best saddle on this place, stole them from his own family. What about his friends? Is there anyone special he hangs out with? with Chip Lang and that Henry boy, they's always underfoot. One to take him to hunt or to fish. Anything, so long as it didn't have anything to do with work. Thank you. Does the law figure, then, that Billy killed that teacher? Is that the way of it? It's got to be. He threatened to shoot me, didn't he? Nothing's settled yet, Mr. Bridges. The sheriff wants to talk to a lot of people, not just Billy. Left home last night. They haven't seen him since. He had a fight with his old man. He stole his rifle. Now I went over to Chip Lang's. They haven't seen him in about a week. We better go to Jeff Henry's. 
Now, let's hit it. Isn't that Jeff Henry? Yeah. Billy? Billy? That's all I could get without cleaning out the cupboards. I got some news, too. Mm -hmm. Doc Lyman was killed. Bushwhacked. Yeah, so? That's all I know. I don't know who did it? Not that I heard. Posse's out riding, though. Hunting. Let him. Enough grub to get me to Sacramento. That's all I care. Hey, well, what are you going to do when you get there? Lots of things. Cowhand, maybe. Or a gunfighter. You got to be awful fast to be a gunfighter. I am fast. The more I think about it, better I like it. People don't yell at you when you're a gunfighter. They say, yes, sir. Because they're scared not to. You're not going anywhere for a while. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Ben. What? What I heard just now, true? You and Candy about Billy Burgesson? Yeah, he's on his way to Sacramento. And he just confessed to the killing of Doc Lyman. And several other killings that have been unsolved around here for the last six months. There was a Patty Rand case, dance hall girl, that feed salesman that disappeared about six months ago, never heard from. And I asked this kid, why did he do it? And he said, I just need some more spending money. I explained to him what he was getting himself into. And he said, I don't care. He just insisted on confessing in front of witnesses. And of course, the other prisoner listened to. Here's a confession. Big talker. You done everything you confessed to. You'd have to be a lot older than you look. I'd done what I said I'd done. All of it. I might believe you, but you could have trouble convincing a jury. They'll believe me. <laughs> they might at that. Mind if I talk to you? By all means, go ahead. You might find something I missed. Don't let him scare you, kid. He ain't a lawyer nor a sheriff. He's just a cartwright. Now you shut up, Sully. Call me if you need me, Ben. Billy? Mind squinching over a bit so I can sit down? You sure are in somewhat of a mess. You killed quite a few people. What difference does it make? I don't keep score. There's a couple of things I'd like to check on here, something you wrote here. Uh, the dance hall girl, the silver dollar, and the uh, feed salesman you murdered. What were the names again? I don't remember. You don't remember the names of the people you killed? Look, I don't worry about people's names. 
They're all the same, rotten. You realize you're probably the most important criminal in Virginia City right now? No one else in Virginia City killed three people. Maybe years ago, but not now. People remember Billy Burgess. For how long? It doesn't matter. What'd you do with the money that you stole? I spent it on a lot of things. What kind of things? What difference does it make? It says here that you followed Doc Lyman to Alder Creek, and you murdered him there. What time was that? Midnight, or later. Are you in Virginia City at midnight? Sure, lots of times. It wasn't hard sneaking out when the folks went to sleep. Did anyone see you? Anyone at all? Nobody. I stayed clean out of sight. But yet you say you saw the doc come out of the saloon and go home. Followed him, did not. Well, you say you did. I did, and I shot him. Why? Because I wanted to. Because he tried to make me look like a fool. And these other things. You did them too. I sure did. office. Tell him I'd like him to take on the Burgess boys' defense. What did he tell you? Joseph, that boy needs the best lawyer in town. Save your time and your money, Ben. There isn't going to be any trial. Tilda, you're a remarkable woman. And I can't begin to add up what Virginia City owes you. But you can be wrong. I must admit you disappoint me, Ben. I had thought you'd be the one man who would understand. Understand what? That you don't risk sending a boy who's underage to the gallows. You just don't take a boy who has been beaten and mistreated ever since he was an infant and force him to stand trial for something over which he had no control. Or had nothing to do with. That's beside the point. Is it? I think it is. Judge Rogers, you and I have thought this out very carefully, haven't we? What we're doing is a little unusual, but Matilda has convinced me it's the humanitarian thing to do. Of course it is. What chance would that boy stand at a trial with his reputation and with the way everybody felt about Doc Lyman? Hmm. Now, it's the humanitarian view. We just uh, railroad the boy out of town quietly. That's a very cruel thing to say, Ben Cartwright. Nobody is going to railroad anybody. There will be a closed hearing tomorrow morning. And Judge Rogers will turn the boy over to the warden of the Nevada State Penitentiary, not as a prisoner, but in the warden's custody. He will live with the warden until he is grown. And then, if he is a useful member of society, the judge will set him free. Now, what is so terrible about that? Oh, it sounds perfectly marvelous. There's just one question. What if the boy is innocent? Innocent? Then there's a signed confession, admitting three murders. And despite that confession, Hoss and little Joe and I are working day and night trying to prove it is not true. If, if the boy is innocent, which is very doubtful, he'll have ample time to prove it when he's grown. Meanwhile, we just sweep the whole mess under the rug. Matilda, how'd you like to be that boy's age right now? and look forward to living for years under the stigma of murder. I'd find it easier to live with than hanging. Would you? I wonder. I'd sure hate to be Billy Burgess, set free your way. I'm sorry you don't agree with this, Ben. There will not be a trial. The closed hearing will be tomorrow morning. Just 
don't know how Carson City is going to look at this. What's Carson City got to do with it? Well, I'm sending a wire to the state's attorney in Carson City, requesting that he assign a new judge to this case. I don't think he'd approve the way you and Mrs. Curtis are handling it. Ben, we're old friends. We can thrash this out. Then make your ruling now, Judge. Either it's a real trial, or I send that wire. <laughs> This confession is of my own free will, signed William Burgess. Order, please. Your Honor, this confession is ridiculous. The boy didn't know what he was signing. Are you trying to say that Sheriff Coffey tricked the boy into signing the confession? No, Your Honor. No, I'm... I'm only saying that I think there may have been other reasons for his signing it. Well, he's confessed to everything but the killing of Joaquin Murrieta. Mr. Osgood, I don't like your implication. No sheriff in Virginia City has ever had a finer reputation for honesty than Roy Coffey. Your Honor, I move that the boy's full confession be accepted in evidence. So ruled. You may step down, Roy. Thank you. Mr. Burgess, your son, your adopted son, is admitted to three cold-blooded murders on the nights of February 17th, April 12th, and April 20th. Now, Mr. Burgess, did you see the boy on any of these nights? Not after supper. He never used the place except to eat. It caused trouble. Objection, Your Honor. That's a matter of opinion. Strike it from the record. I don't know the law, Your Honor, but I know how bad and when I see him. Object. Sustained. Mr. Burgess, on the night the murder of Randall Timon occurred, wasn't there a bitter argument between you and Billy? With him around, there was always an argument. That night, he threatened to shoot me. Threatened you? Wasn't he only trying to protect himself? Not the way I saw it. And I was there. Didn't Billy tell you that night that he's going away for good? That he's going to California? And isn't that the only reason he was hiding out when the sheriff's men found him? That's his excuse. It doesn't seem to be helping him much. Mr. Cartwright, would you say that Billy Burgess was a model student at the Ponderosa School? Oh, he wasn't much different than the rest of the youngsters. It's sort of hard to talk a young fellow like that into liking school. You mean he was no different from any of the others? Well, he's a little bigger, maybe a little noisier. Mr. Cartwright, did any of the other students threaten the teacher? No. You did hear the threat. You reported to the sheriff, didn't you? Mr. Cartwright. Come inside, it's very important. Well, but... Please answer the question, yes or no. Answer the question, Mr. Cartwright. Well, yes, but... Uh, that's all, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. I have no further questions, Your Honor. What is it? I think we finally got some. You know, uh, Matty over at the Silver Dollar Saloon? Huh? He told us that Dick Colder had a big argument with the doctor the night before the murder. Colder was real mad, told the doctor to stay away or else. Let's go see him. As I told you, Providence would provide us. And I found us another little bottle of whiskey, too. I don't care about whiskey. I want horses so we can get out of here. <laughs> ben, I've disappointed the little lady. And whiskey's always been a little bit of that problem. Dick, 
When was the last time you saw Doc Lyman? I haven't seen him since the night he delivered his brilliant judgment on the luck he called her. You haven't seen him since then? I would have been a little bit of a miracle, Ben. <laughs> you see, immediately following my humiliating defeat, my neighbors and I came back here to do us a little bit of celebrating. The horses, they didn't have the same idea. They went back to the livery stable. I guess, stupid though. You rent cheap horses. Oh. You both been here since the night of that argument? By no choice of mine. As you can see, I'm fast approaching a famine. What do you want to know about Doc Lyman for? No reason now. We'll have the livery stable send you a couple of fresh horses. Have them send me out a few bottles, too, because I'm going to need it. jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. How do you find? We find the defendant guilty. suspected you did. I ought to whip you within an inch of your life. And I still may. Come in, Ben. I thought it would be you. Have you come to ease your conscience? Matilda, I need your help. Now you need my help. Yes. Now when it's too late. I just got through talking with Roy Coffey and Judge Rogers. We're going to send a wire to the governor, asking for a stay until we get new evidence. What new evidence? The boy is innocent, Matilda. We'll find new evidence. You still want to gamble with that boy's life, don't you, Ben? One thing that you could always say about my husband. When he sat down to play poker, he knew what the odds were. May I have permission to use your name? The glad wait with the governor. No. I won't do it for you. But I will do it for the boy. I don't know how much good it will do. Thank you. I'm sorry for you, Ben. You're going to have to live with this for a long time. I know I won't be able to sleep nights, and it wasn't my decision. It was yours. Come in. Oh, hello, Ben. I hate to bother you, Miss Curtis, but I'm going to have to have that check for the Lucky Coulter. My stage leaves in about ten minutes. Oh, yes, Walt. I'm sorry. My mind has been on other things. I'll get it for you. Here it is. Ten thousand dollars. And uh, here's the bill of sale made over to you, Mrs. Curtis. Thank you. And good luck to you in California. Thank you very much. Bye, Ben. Have a good trip. Would he send you the lucky quarter for ten thousand dollars? He could get forty or fifty thousand for it. Well, I don't see that that's any of your business, Ben. You see that bit of sale? 
Really, I'm quite capable of handling my... May I see it, please? It's all signed and legal and notarized by Merv Travis. Did Lucy Travis have a baby? In early January. Ben, a boy's life is at stake. When? It was the 10th of January, I remember, because that's my birthday, too. She was very close to death. Merv never left her side. You'd better send that wire. There won't be time for an answer. I don't have to send that wire. Ben, did you come see me off? Yeah, in a manner of speaking, I suppose I did. Hey, driver, uh, Mr. Billings luggage, would you set it down, please? Well, leave it where it is, driver. What do you think you're doing, Ben? Well, I've just been looking up the lucky colt of ever sale. It's kind of unusual. According to the date, January 10th, it was signed by the notary on a day when he wasn't even around. Merv Travers signed it, and he put his seal on it. No, no, he didn't. You see, on the day that you say he signed it, Merv was taking care of his sick wife. Oh, well, we can easily check up on that. Just ask Merv. Well, I'm going to miss my stage, Ben. Doc Lyman smelled something funny, too, and checked up on you. Found out that old man Coulter's signature was a forgery, too. Is that why you killed Doc Lyman? That's ridiculous, Ben. Don't move, Ben. I gotta learn you some grammar. Come on. Oh, sure. <laughs> the new teacher seems quite capable. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, size and brawn were taken into consideration for the job. <laughs> Just Pa makes you work pretty hard, but uh, I like living there. It's good. Thanks for arranging it, Mr. Cartwright. He, he wanted you. Asked for you. You better get in there before it's too late. That horse is a rough headmaster. You were lucky, Ben. You took a big chance. I'd do it all over again if I had to. I'm sure you would. Now, we, we're not uh, really in any argument. We both want the same thing. Protection for the youngsters from those horrible adult laws and protection for their rights, too. That's a large order. Yeah, I suppose it is. Oh, I guess we won't see it in our time. Hmm? Maybe someday. And people are too smart not to change. <laughs> 